The best type of exercise for your fertility is the one that you actually do. <laughs> and of course, there's a whole lot more to this, which I'll cover as best as I can in this video, which I've even dressed up for today. Um, but the thing that you need to understand is this. Whatever exercise you choose to do that you normally do and that your body's used to and conditioned for is going to be fine for you to continue doing whilst you're trying to get pregnant, even in the early stages of pregnancy. The difficulty arises when you either do no exercise or you overtrain. And over the years, the patients that I treat typically fall into the under train, much more so than the over train. But the over train is really, really, really an issue as well. And understanding what it is that your body can and can't cope with from a reproductive perspective, because what happens is this, if you're over training, you're going to need to output a whole lot more hormones for metabolic hormones for regeneration, for recovery, for you know, essentially managing the processes that exercise actually start to break down to make it really, really simple, right? And so basically what happens is that you're going to be utilizing some of your reproductive building blocks for reproductive hormones for the purposes of your other metabolic hormones if you are overtraining, adrenaline, noradrenaline, you know, cortisol, you name it. So it's important, like when I, when I talk to my patients about how much exercise is a good thing to do, I would say that you absolutely want to be doing some form of activity and movement for at least an hour a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Now, most people don't get to that amount of exercise on the best of days. Even I, that trains very regularly, I'm very consistent and I've become this way over the years, I really wasn't, I, I was allergic to exercise, <laughs> I'll be honest. But uh, as I've you know, grown older, I've decided, okay, I really need to focus on this because you know, for various other health reasons, health related reasons, and because I'm, you know, wanna obviously be as, as fit as I can be for as long as possible. So the reality of it is that when you're trying to get pregnant, you want to ensure that you are moving at least daily. And I would recommend if you do no exercise right now that you start with walking, literally even in the treadmill, just an hour walking, put on, a, I always love, if I go to the gym um, and I'm doing cardio, which I really don't particularly enjoy, I always have an audiobook or something that I'm listening to that, I, that engages me that I actually want to be there for for that particular thing more than the exercise and it gets done right and sometimes it even gets me there because I'm like oh my god I want to know what happened on that you know next chapters of this book or whatever and so you've got to find and pair strategies that are going to support you to get there. The key is to make sure that you are doing it, that you are doing something on a regular basis, and that if you are doing too much, i.e. more than about an hour and a half, five to six days a week, I would say that you certainly want to have, if you, over, like if you, if you train already quite extensively, you would want to be taking at least one day off. And you want to be making sure that your intensity is only up to about 60 to 70% intensity in a session, and that you're doing it for no longer than 90 minutes, okay? Already that's on the high end of training. So you want to make sure that you are moderating that if you are on the high end of training, and you certainly want to make sure that you're doing no less than a walk for an hour seven days a week. This is going to help to balance hormones, it's going to balance your blood sugar levels, which optimizes ovulation, and just makes you feel better. You know, serotonin, endorphins, all of those hormones are boosted by neurotransmitters by you actually getting out there and getting active. So whatever type of activity you choose is perfectly fine. And here I will say that yoga is not necessarily something that I would count here as exercise. You want it to be something that you are actually moving. And ideally, even when you're walking, that you are really kind of, you know, like you're, you're going at a brisk pace. You're not just like doodling or doddling along, right? And the reason that I say yoga is not really an exercise, and that would be the same for Pilates and all of those things, fantastic activity for stress reduction, for stretching your muscles, for just feeling better and all of those things. 
but it doesn't have the same effect when it comes to blood sugar regulation, to endorphin release in some instances, and even just from the perspective of you getting your calories, um, you know, kind of like burning up as high as it can be. So I would recommend if nothing else, if you like different forms of exercise, and for me, I love weights training, so that's the thing that I go to. With having PCOS as well, I've noticed that it's completely regulated my cycle over the years, and it has been one of the best things I've ever actually done for my health, for my well-being. But and it burns, you know, quite a lot more calories, which enables me to have a healthy diet without, you know, uh, not having to, to decrease my calories so much to keep my body weight where I want it to be. So that's where you want to be doing the, the walking or, or, you know, kind of really favoring that over any other activity that is less than that, if you know what I mean. So if you have questions, please put it in the comments. Happy to answer them. And until next time, bye for now.